Hello, everyone, and welcome to Women Thriving Unapologetically. I am your host, Lindsay McCowan, and it is my great pleasure to be here today with you. This is a sanctuary for you to land every week and feel connected through inspiring and powerfully honest conversations with women like you. We cover a vast array of topics that empower you to heal, transform, and thrive in body, mind, and in your life in spite of life's challenges. So before we dive into today's show, let's just take a moment to stop and pause and breathe. We all have time to stop, pause, and breathe. And when we do so, it enables us to come back to center, to ground, and to be more present. So wherever you are, just take a moment to take your hand on your heart and your other hand on your belly. And of course, if you're driving, hands stay on the wheel and eyes stay open. But if you're in a place where you can, hands on the heart and belly and close the eyes. And then just take five deep breaths in and out through the nose. And then as you breathe in, just feel the belly rise and fall underneath the palm of your hand. And also feeling the chest rise and fall underneath the other palm of your hand. Simply by connecting to the breath and to the body, you can feel yourself become more relaxed more present and slowly coming back to center. Last breath in and out. And then when you're ready, simply opening your eyes and making your way back. And just notice how you feel. Just five simple breaths in and out, hands on heart, hands on belly, brings you back to this moment. And it's a perfect moment when we're grounded and present to invite our fabulous guest for today into conversation. So today we have Ariane Traverso coming in and Ari is amazing. I've known her for um, several years now, and I've had the pleasure of actually working with her as well. And Ari is a believer in limitless possibilities for women, for everybody, but we're talking about women today, right? And so, uh, and she has this amazing ability um, to have this passion for helping women to align with their dreams to create more freedom and abundance. She merges her expertise as a business coach, marketing expert, and internationally recognized yoga leader to offer consulting to women who want to make an impact in business, their personal lives, and in the world. She guides new and growing brands with passion and purpose and presence to uncover their untapped potential and jumpstart a new era of their business using online strategies. Ari, as I know her, has helped thousands of women launch their profitable business and become more confident leaders in their field on and offline. So Ari is here today to help us navigate all the different roles we have as women. You know, we like roles such as mother, mentors, partners, nurturers, supporters, business owners, breadwinners, role models, caretakers, and the list goes on. I don't know about you, but I'm already tired and exhausted just <laughs> listing all the roles. <laughs> and I didn't even list all of them. And so she's going to help us navigate um, how do we manage all these roles confidently um, without getting burnt out? Whew. Okay, that's a big question right there. So um, please welcome Ari to the show. Hi, Ari. I hear the, I hear the fans. <sighs> No. <laughs> Hi, thank you Lindsay. uh you guys will see that i'm kind of a jokester but um hi <laughs> hi you got to keep it light we have yeah. to have fun well, when, with all these roles that we're carrying exactly wearing, there has to be some lightness to it all of it otherwise we're just in the heavy of it exactly I um feel good no. <laughs> well, thank you for having me on. I'm so sure. excited. This is such a great uh, opportunity for us to talk about things that we don't normally talk about, you know, as a client, as friends. And, um, you know, it's funny when you read my bio, I was like, oh, that, oh, dang, that's me. <laughs> it took me a moment to like, let it sink in. I was like, okay, that's what I do. Thank and you. A beautiful reflection back, Ari, is that so often as women with all these roles that we have that we don't even have time to 
to let it sink in what we're doing and what we are actually accomplishing and how amazing we are. We just keep going. And it's not until someone says, Hey, let me, let me read back to you all the things that you've done and all the things that you're doing and just really let it sink in and, and not brush it off and be like, okay, whatever, someone else is doing more. And, but really let it sink in and be like, you know what? I'm amazing. I'm magnificent. So I see you as magnificent. I hope you yeah, do too. But um, I'd love to dive into this first question because um, I love how you talk about, you know, it's important to have your word or words that really define what you want in your life or define who you are so that they are guideposts for you so that you don't forget, like, yeah. this is my guidepost because we forget mm -hmm. in the busyness of life. And one of your words is freedom. And it's the word, it's the word, it's the word. And so as a businesswoman and mom, what does freedom mean to you? And how does that translate into your business and into your life? You know, it's funny. I've been sitting with this word lately a little bit more because for me, freedom has shifted in what it means. It used to mean independence, but now it means almost core existence. Because I used to be like, oh, I can do whatever I want. That was freedom, right? Like I, a little bit of my backstory, but um, I moved here when I was nine years old with my family from Peru when there was uh, like crazy terrorism and like inflation was like 150 million percent. Um, just to get an idea, a bag of rice was like $30. So we moved to the United States and I was always fairly independent, you know, like I would do my things. My mom didn't have to check on me for homework. Like I always did my thing. And clearly I remember being 16 years old and being like, when can I move out of my parents' house? <laughs> I was like counting the days. And I had this big dream to live in South beach and drive a scooter. That was like my a ultimate, a scooter. Um, <laughs> I, I achieved it. I actually owned three scooters living in South Beach, but the, um, that aspect of like independence shifted when I, I think when I call myself an adult, quote unquote, and when I became a business owner, and let me sh share with you guys the, the demarcation, my independent, like fun times as I was still an adult, but I was a freelancer. I didn't really have, like, I had a job every now and then I would like work in an advertising agency or publishing, but I always liked to own my time. I didn't like to be told when I had to be, when I had to be in, out. So I, you know, I worked a lot with like, um, video production and photo shoots because it was like a three-day gig. I'd make a bunch of money and then I'd be home free, you know, and I'd, I would teach my yoga classes. And that shifted when I became a business owner. I opened a yoga studio. And for those of you who practice yoga, you don't know what goes on behind owning a brick and mortar business. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot. Um, and I realized that my independence now was more limited because other people relied on me. A lot of people, mm -hmm. the students, the other teachers. So that was a big shift for me in terms of ownership and freedom as I do what I want when I wanted was limited. It, it was boxed in. So your original and, definition was starting to kind of crumble. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that I am not made for this type of business model. Mm -hmm. It's restricting me. And I shifted my idea of freedom into a core value because I realized how important it was to not give up. It was a non-negotiable for me. And the, the idea of being a business owner didn't change because even though I, I ended up um, getting rid of the studio and I created this coaching business, I was like, what are the, the qualities of my business that I am not willing to give up? So I made a purely online business. Um, I do own a trade show. It happens once a year. So, you know, that doesn't uh, impede in my freedom of like, hey, I want to take a trip. Mm -hmm. um, I want to work remotely from a cafe today. I want to 
work from Costa Rica, whatever, mm-hmm. right? So to me, a lot of the, the freedom, it's like, if I give up on how I move throughout my life, it's going to start taking a toll on my like emotions, on my mental health. And, and to me, that was such a powerful like realization that like, yes, it's all about independence, but it's also like an intrinsic core value that the minute, the minute it gets like cut, Ari goes into, into an emotional breakdown. It was like owning that yoga studio was like the best time of my life and the worst time of my life. Um, but you know, the, the, can I cuss the, oh shits lead to the aha. Sorry. Just did it. <laughs> I love how you asked for, for permission and just keep going. <laughs> You know, just do it and then apologize. Uh, what it's a saying that you, uh, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is for, for permission. Yeah. So I just did both. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. So, um, because it's part of being human, it's part of being a woman, you know, yeah. like we always feel like, you know, society wants to tell us, you know, how, how to behave and how to look and, you know, some women do curse. So, um, but you know, there's so many great, um, pieces to what you just said. I love how you said you know, that you wanted to own your time, that you don't want anyone else to own your time. And so often we feel that we don't have enough time because we have so much going on. But when you defined what your core values were and you said, okay, the, this is non-negotiable because women will negotiate all of the things that they want yeah. over and over and over again and do this, the whole, the the role of self-sacrificing and being mm-hmm. a martyr, but that doesn't really serve their family. So if you could like explain how, like okay, by defining your core value and say, making it a non-negotiable, how that has actually enhanced, not just your life, but the life of your family and give that to some perspective for women out there who are like, okay, you know, how do you, how do you stop sacrificing, you know, your values? Yeah. And first I want to, I want to say that it's, it's not something that happens overnight and it's not easy. And I want to say it's simple, not easy. Mm -hmm. It takes effort. It takes effort. It takes effort. It takes, um, it takes being uh, one of, uh, this guy, uh, this amazing man, Chet Holmes says like pig headed determination (laughs) (laughs) because it's so easy to, brush yourself to the side. And again, the show is for women and I'm a mom. I have a two-year-old and, uh, it's been my biggest teacher of how to be even more determined to make sure that I show up correctly for her. Mm -hmm. So what are things that I do sacrifice? Like I might not do laundry for a couple days. Like I, I pick my battles. So I say, what are, what are the most important things for me? Number one, my daughter and my husband. Number two, my work. I love what I do, right? I love what I do. I love my clients. I get to work with like the coolest women um, who are changing the world. And my dogs. Eh. (laughs) But at the end of the day, it's like, pick your battles. What are, what are things that you can delegate? What are things that you could just like say, you know what, this is not that important right now. So I, I almost look at my life instead of to-do list and in, in chunks of like most important, urgent, eh, can wait and like rain check. So it also gives you a, a chance to like measure your energy levels. And like, I'm a uber energetic person, but I can't expect everybody to work at my speed. So it's, it's recognizing it's, I work with the four A's, right? Assess, align, account, um, action and accountability. So based on this, it's like, I always have to check myself. It's like, wait, what's the situation? Am I like working in my flow or am I working in a, in a way that's very friction? Who can help me if I'm, if I can't do this, like what actions can I take? And then like, Hey, who's going to hold me accountable to make sure that I'm, I am acting in my highest state. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just told you, I came back from vacation yesterday and funny story. Like we were in the car driving for four hours with my mom, my husband, myself, my child, and you know, my kids too. She's sitting in a car seat for like hours and she starts like spitting on herself and like putting like 
saliva on her feet. My mom's like, Addy, Addy, your daughter's doing this. And I was like, what am I going to do? Like, I'm not going to fight with her right now. You just let her do whatever. I'll clean her after. And I felt like I, I got so judged, but I was like, no, I pick my battles. What am I going to do? Yell at her while she's sitting in a car seat for three hours? Like spit all over yourself, kid. Yeah. Like let her be a kid. Yeah. Where so, are you putting your energy is what I'm hearing. Like, yes. And is it yeah. in the areas that are going to feed you or deplete you? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm always about feeding myself. And yeah, there's times that like you hit a wall, like you go into overwhelm, but like, that's where you have people like Lindsay that I can be like, my coach, you know, like, Hey, like, I, I, I just want to talk, like, give me some tips so that I can like re rebalance, like find the flow. And that's why it's that accountability piece. Yeah, the I'll accountability do it and the support, like women reach out for support, like decide where you need the support, what you can delegate so that you have that more, that more spacious freedom in your life, freedom in your life. Mm -hmm. And it can be difficult when we, especially women that are perfectionists or have been taught that you have to do everything um, on your own to prove that you're, you know, super woman or super mom or super entrepreneur, but that's really not how we are meant to be as uh, women or in community. Like we're meant to be in yeah. community and being not just of service, but also receiving that support. Yeah. So, you know, we're coming up close to our, our first break, so we can lead into the next question, but we might have to finish it um, after the break because this idea of, you know, women thriving unapologetically, both the radio show and the Facebook group is meant to support women and following their heart's guidance. And so when you went from freelance yoga studio owner to solo business entrepreneur, that's big. Um, it's a huge leap. I mean, it requires a completely different skill set. I mean, I'm sure you'll take some of the skills into that, but it requires a lot of faith and, and trust that you're being guided. And so I might just have to pose this question and we come back to it out of, uh, after break and you can, you can marinate on it. How did you know that you, this was in alignment with your heart and how did you, and what was the shift in your mindset, um, in order to trust your heart's calling? um, to expand into this greater capacity so that you could have more freedom. Um, so let's just, we'll end it there and I'll let you contemplate on that. I'll use that as a little like carrot nibbler for our listeners to come back. Um, so we're just going to take a very short break and take that moment to, um, ask the question to yourself as well, listeners, and take a, uh, the opportunity also to take a few breaths into it. And then we'll be back shortly with Ariane Traverso. Traverso. <laughs> all right, we're all clear, sounding great. Awesome. Uh, Lindsay, can I, can I be your coach for a second? Yeah. Watch the ums. Okay. Um, um, I do it a lot, it's been a work in progress. Yeah, thank but you. It's awesome, I'm loving the conversation. That's mm. great. Yeah. You don't Do we know like how many people listen live? Like, is there data? Well, it's a new show. So I don't know. I don't have data yet on my show. Um, but in general, to Are, Voice will America, you be able Aaron, to? You have yeah. Yeah. You'll receive um, uh, weekly stats from your executive producer. Good. Because now we can start figuring out conversion rates, Lindsay. And if you don't reach out to them and then they'll give them to you. <laughs> Yeah. You know me, I'm like, how many people are listening? How many people are going to turn to clients? <laughs> I know. I appreciate that about you because that's usually not what I'm doing. That's why I have you. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Child has been delivered to school. Perfect. Be safe and sound. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um. But see, like with our school, you can't just walk in. There's gates. No one can just walk in. I feel safe. Yeah. A lot of parents aren't feeling that way these days. No, 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 no. 20 seconds. Okay.
10 seconds. Right, here we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Women Thriving Unapologetically and me, your host, Lindsay McCowan. You are listening to Women Thriving Unapologetically with Lindsay McCowan. Have a question for Lindsay or her guests? Want to share your story? Email Lindsay at thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. That's thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. Now back to the show. Here again is Lindsay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Women Thriving Unapologetically and me, your host, Lindsay McCowan. Today, I am joined by Ariane Traverso, an entrepreneur, a mom, yoga leader, wife, business owner, oh, and so many more hats she wears, um, just as many of you do as well. And so we're really getting into a great conversation on how to take a leap of faith and follow your heart's guidance system and uh, the mindset shift that has to happen in order to do that. So before we went to break, I asked Ari, how did she make that big leap from being a yoga studio owner to a solo entrepreneur and trust that she was doing this um, from the guidance of her heart and what the mindset shift that had to happen in order for her to you know, be brave. Okay, Ari, did you have time to think about that one? Um, you know, I have the memory of a goldfish sometimes. And I was like, wait, what did she ask me? And I was like, oh no, yeah. <laughs> Shifts, <laughs> transformations, what? Um, so, you know, it, you say this word, like the, the heart. And I was like, did I make that shift from the heart or was it a more like practical shift? Mm. Mm-hmm. And I, I operate from like higher mind versus heart most of the time. I mean, they go back and forth, right? They fluctuate as we know, um, energetically, but for me, it's usually a mental decision versus an emotional driven one. But what's funny is that when I thought about it, I was like, oh my God. So I was in an abusive relationship. Uh, in my yoga studio, one of my business partners was emotionally and verbally abusive to me. And that's been the only time in my life because I'm a, I'm a fairly strong, like strong woman. I am like, you know, I don't let people like give me crap. Um, or maybe I just avoid it. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. But <laughs> this was the one time that I felt like I was getting crushed. Mm. and and you know I had never felt like that you know like like physically would shake and so I do think the decision was an emotional one at the fundamental level but it was two people that helped me navigate this transition first of all I hired a business coach for the first time in my life I didn't even know business coaches existed so, and I met this woman and she was just so um, empowering, right? She like really allowed me to see myself for who I could be. Nice. Right. Um, which I, again, I was kind of working in this slightly suppressed uh, state for, for probably like four years at, at my um, old studio. So when I met her, it was like, if somebody... Um, I don't know if you guys know about, it's called the hero's journey. Like she was like, oh, here's your potential. And I was like, what? Blew your mind. Yeah. And because of her, I met this, another amazing woman who was a divorce attorney and a mediator. And she gave me words to stop the abuse, quote unquote. And it was all about the I. I want to live my life like this. I want to operate my life like this. And when I said that, instead of you are doing this to me, wow, there was, there was no, there was no like revert, like th there was no conversation. It was like, claimed I your own power. Absolutely. And I wasn't afraid anymore. Nice. So when you claim your power, you also reclaim um, 
power of choice and also courage. Like mm-hmm. the fear isn't dictating you and the <clears throat> other person isn't controlling you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was like a big aha moment because it brought me back to my core value freedom. And I wasn't free at that moment. I was being suppressed. Mm -hmm. So that was a a big awakening, which led to me understanding also my strengths as a business person. So I I love for all my my clients to take strength tests. Um, There's like the disc assessment, or there's the Gallup, there's wealth dynamics, there's um, the human design. But when you when you do this, and you say, hey, this is what I'm really good at. Like I'm a creator and I'd love to figure things out. And I was working as a uh, manager, right? At, at the end of the day, you're managing people. That is not in my happy place. So that allowed me to see, okay, so if I'm a creator, how do I step into my strengths fully versus trying to fix, quote unquote, my weaknesses mm-hmm. or trying to work from this, uh, you know, uh, place where, I'm like, I, I'm here managing people and like having to do books and like, it doesn't, I hate that stuff. I need you. Right. So that's when I was like, okay, I want to create my own thing because now I don't have to like answer to business partners. And that's why most of the time that I work with my clients and they're like, oh, I'm thinking about doing this business with this person. I'm like, let's sit with it. Mm-hmm. By the way, about 80, 90% of partnerships in business fail. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Read some, read some stories about partnerships and they can be done amazingly and you got to navigate things right with communication, with clarity. So, which I want to talk about in a minute, but so I decided to create my own business and look at the word create. It brought me joy. It brought me like I was in charge of my success. I didn't have to like count on anybody else because of, again, that independent side, that core value of freedom, that core value of, um, a fun, like I wanted to have fun in my business yes. and having my own thing that I could do whatever I wanted. I could design it however I wanted. I could mentor however I wanted. It just gave me so much joy. And it gave me again, that like essence of like, oh, this is what it feels like to really work in your power. I love that. And, you know, I also, what struck me, um, is that again, you asked for help, you reached out for support or because you noticed that you needed help and they, with things that you didn't know how to navigate, but you recognized the need there and you listened to that. And so, you know, that, you know, when you talked about higher mind versus heart, you know, I think both of them are connected and sometimes we like lead with one versus the other. And for our listeners, um, can you explain a little bit what higher mind means so that they understand? I'm, I think they can understand what it means to be, you know, connected to the heart, but what is higher mind versus the, the lower chatter of the mind? Yeah. So the lower chatter of the mind is the, usually what I call the itty bitty shitty committee. <laughs> I didn't make that up. I heard it. I'm writing that down. <laughs> um, it's all the, the noise, right? The noise of confusion, the noise of fear, the noise of um, it, it, overwhelm, the, the noise of maybe negativity. So clarity, right? If you like grabbed a, a dry erase board and you just squeaky clean things, and you left a few core things, higher mind allows you to, to almost see, right, to see with, with your thoughts, and to, and to, to see things without the clutter. Mm -hmm. So I think when you said, like, I reached out for help, that's what my coach did for me, she helped me see without the clutter. She was like, what do you really want? What does that look like? right? Like future pacing meditations. Um, She helped me understand that, again, I am responsible for designing my life. And, and that helped when I, when I 
thought about things, it helped me like break them down into like, okay, if this is what I want, this is my vision. Okay. Like my innate, like clear, um, fearless vision, uh, big, hairy, scary, audacious goals. Um, I was like, now what is the path to get there? So I was able to, to create some sort of a plan, right? Like obviously life throws you uh, roadblocks, but it allowed me to take steps to get there faster without having to like deviate left and right. And look, during this transition, I got married, had a baby, the, the world shut down. You know what I mean? <laughs> a lot happened. Yeah. Like that's been like the last six years of my life. And every one of those steps I was like, is this part of my vision? Mm -hmm. Is this aligned with what I want, with like the way I want to lead my life? Like are the people that I'm welcoming into my life that, and I'm also setting boundaries, right? Like I, after that empowerment, like I want to do that. I was like boundaries. Oh, what? I, I can do that. Great. And so there, it's small decisions that accumulate. Yes. into big changes. So that one, then that moment where you're like, okay, I'm in this abusive relationship. I'm not happy. This is not, this, this job is not lighting me up. I need help. And that small decision to ask for help led to this greater understanding and clarity for what you wanted. And it was, it just took that little bit of courage. It didn't, you didn't need a whole ton of it. You just needed to take that first small step and then that person could support you the way that you needed and clarify yeah. your vision, which sounds like it became another guidepost for you. Mm -hmm. So it helped, helped you keep your eye on that big, hairy, audacious goal. And then of course, you know, like you said, life happens and we kind of weave and bob and swirl and twirl and, and to, but we always can still see that vision, but we still yeah. need that accountability oftentimes for someone to help us see it. I mean, I know I need that. That's why I lean into you oftentimes for you to be like, okay, wait a second, let's back up. Let's slow down. This is, remember this vision that you had? Um, because, you know, this morning to be, you know, completely honest with everyone is that this morning I woke up and I was on the floor bawling. And I was at this point where like, you know what? F it. I am so tired of, you know, trying to make my business work you know, I do all the practices. I have a strong spiritual practice. I have, I've had my eye on that vision for years and I'm not seeing the results that I want. And I had that moment of breakdown and I'm like, you know, snots all over my face. I'm on the floor. I'm still on my VJs. I'm looking at the clock. I like, I've got a radio show to do here shortly. <laughs> and so, you know, and that's part of it, you know? And so how, what would your, advice be like in those moments? I mean, I know what I had to do, but you know, from your perspective, when you reach that point where you just, you're like, okay, there's my vision. You know, how do I stay the course when I feel broken and tired? That's such a great question. And like, I feel for moms out there who have toddlers, <laughs> a lot of them, a lot of them. Um, I, I'm also like navigating this place where like, I just came out of exhaustion because like my daughter hadn't been sleeping through the night. So like, I feel like I haven't fully like rested in forever. Um, and it takes a toll, right? It takes a toll on how, how much you can think, how much you can, ugh. I also came out of vacation for five days with my family. You guys know, like it's amazing. And right. And you need another so, vacation. And then we need another vacation. But I was like, no one talk to me anymore. <laughs> Don't ask me for things. And, and especially when you take the role of like problem solver or solution giver, um, like Lindsay's a coach, I'm a coach. Like we are pillars of strength for people. So if we don't have that, you know, strength to, to lean on, then we're almost like giving, giving, giving and not pouring back into the cup. And look, um, spiritual practices are amazing. Um, and like recognizing that sometimes it is okay to like throw yourself on the floor and cry and 
or maybe like drink a half a bottle of wine and just be like, right? <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Ah! And, and business is not being a solo entrepreneur. It's not the easiest business model, right? It's not, but it's, it's, it's the one that makes huge shifts mm -hmm. in, in the lives of, of a few people or one person or hundreds of people. And it really is a, a moment where you just sit back and you're like, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Like, what is my bigger purpose? Like one thing is, is your vision of like, oh, I want to have like three homes and I want to be able to take vacation and like design my life like this. And the other thing is like, why do I do this? Like, mm -hmm. why did I start women thriving apologetically? Why did I create my coaching business? Like, what is the core? And to me, my why is that if I can help women tap into their potential, then that's going to make me get off the floor and do the radio show and do the Facebook live and start the Facebook group and be active and network and ask, ask for sales, right. And do all those things that are, are sometimes like, Oh my God, I have to do this again. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, because look, you're going to have success sometimes and other times you're going to fail and it's going to blow up in your face and that's okay. Because then you can say, what did I do that made the success? What didn't I do that made me not have the success, right? So you start tweaking and you start and look how I, I, you know, during the break, I was like, Hey, what's the data? What information can I take from this? How can I see my my road behind me so that I can make an easier road forward. I love that. How, you know, not looking at the past as proof of failure, but as information to help guide you on to, to stay on your path towards your vision. Like how, mm -hmm. what, what's a little bit of course correction that you can take so that you stay on path. And yeah. I don't remember who said this, and this might not even be absolutely accurate, but I can't remember if it's 1% or 5% <laughs> change uh, in your trajectory. Say, for example, if you're leaving from New York and you're, you know, flying to Europe and you just change your trajectory by one degree, like the course correction, you'll end up, you know, on a completely different continent. So that's just great. You know, reminder is that, okay, what's the small correction that you can make to, you know, stay on path and not feel like it has to be so big. And because yeah. that, that's what I fall into is like, okay, I'm not seeing the big numbers. I'm not, I mean, I'm not reaching hundreds of clients and all the women I want to serve. And I have so many gifts I want to share. And maybe it's just that one person that you've changed their life and allow that to be nourishing. And you know, what's really cool, Lindsay, you have a freaking radio show. And now we get to empower people together in this conversation and you know this good. this yeah it feels awesome right so it's like you we are creating mm -hmm. the the recipes to get to where we want to go I like that we get to create the recipes too yeah so with that we are up um time for our second break our last break of the show and so we're just going to take this nice little short break but Again, don't go anywhere because this conversation is really amazing and Ari brings it. And I'm sure the second half, we're going to be bringing it too. Um, so we'll dive a little bit more into how to manage the stress and what are some of the tools that we can utilize in order to um, ensure that we don't burn out. And also um, we'll learn about a little bit more about what Ari does and how she can support you. Okay. Stay tuned. All right. We're all clear. Awesome. That was a good one. Yeah. That's really um, good. Yeah. It's easy to just riff with you. Yeah. That's why I told you, I was like, don't plan too many questions. I know we'll be able no. to talk some cool stuff. I, post. I know. I know. Just in case we run out of things to say, which is nearly impossible. B basically, <laughs> basically. <laughs> which is always it, but you never want to be on air. And have dead air, right, Aaron? <laughs> exactly. Silence is golden, except for two situations in radio and toddlers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes 
Mm. And it's suspicious. Yes. <laughs> they're up to something. It sounds like mm. they're up to something. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That's funny. Okay. So we, this is our last little bit here. Are there any particular questions that you really want to dive into for this? Last um, bit? Or is there anything that you really want to share? It's kind of. I, I, I think we can talk more about like, like, I don't know, maybe like some like life management skills or something like that. Like maybe give the, the listeners some more like actionable tools to take away. Love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. seconds. Okay. And I'll, I'll, we can just keep talking though and I'll, yeah. I'll weave it in there. 10 seconds. Sure to listen to the commercial first. <laughs> All right, here we go. You are listening to Women Thriving Unapologetically with Lindsay McCowan. Have a question for Lindsay or her guests? Want to share your story? Email Lindsay at thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. That's thrivingunapologetically at gmail.com. Say something, Lindsay. Now back to the show. Here again is Lindsay. Welcome back to Women Thriving Unapologetically. We are honored to be having an amazing conversation with Ari Traverso on how to thrive as a business owner, but also just how to be a woman wearing so many different hats, fulfilling so many roles without getting burnt out, stressed out, worn out, depleted. And we're going to dive into um, some tools that can support you in your busy life. So welcome back. Welcome back. So all right, you know, the World Health Organization um, is great to look up statistics on what's happening um, in our bodies and our minds. And I've noticed that, you know, anxiety and depression, overwhelm are statistically higher for women than for men. And, um, and that women are experiencing symptoms of burnout more than men um, in I have my suspicions on why that is, and we've already touched on why that might be, Um, perhaps because of all those roles that we have to care that we want to fulfill and some underlying beliefs that we have to be more, do more, um, to be a value. Um, but we won't necessarily, we can dive into that if we want, but I'd love to support our listeners on like, okay, we have all these roles. We have all these obligations and responsibilities how do, what can we do to support ourselves so that we are not becoming another statistic? Yeah. And look, here's the thing over the last, what, like hundred years. Cause I just like close my eyes and look at like my grandmother, right. For example, like she was born in 1917, the roles of women have changed <laughs> from our, I'm going to say like almost innate nurture the ones that we take care of things. Like I look at my daughter and she takes care of her like baby dolls and she like puts them to sleep and she feeds them. Like I, I did not teach her this because <laughs> I'm more like, ah, right, doing all the things. And I'm like, oh, I'll look at her. Like, so women's roles have changed drastically. And to our, almost to, to our like bursting point, because yes, of course we want to be equal and we want to have all these things that, you know, the, the, the breadwinners and we want to, you know, do everything. This is what, this is what's happened. We want to do everything and we want to be everything. And there's a point where it's like, Hey, you are giving all the time. Mm -hmm. You are taking care of a mother, a friend, a child, a partner, you're taking care of your job. And also like the the world isn't set up for a one income household. So let's like, I I know some of you ladies can just like close your eyes and be like, "Mm, okay, I wake up. I got to like dress my kid, make sure they have breakfast, take them, you know, maybe take them to school. Like my husband took her to school today. Um, and then I have to go to work and then I have to come home and make sure that like the house is taken care of, the laundry's done, the, you know, people are fed and, you know, people are clean. 
uh, uh, wait, where did I go? Mm -hmm. And when you, when you ask yourself that question, you realize, OMG, all I've done is take care of other people. And I'm now depleted. And I'm feeling guilty if I even take five minutes for myself. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know that word mom guilt until I was a mom. And then I was also like, oh, entrepreneur guilt. I own my own business. Like, oh, if I'm not working right now, eh, who's going to get things done? So there's like layers of guilt, of shame, of like, oh, I'm not showing up strong enough. Oh, I asked for a day off. Like my boss, <laughs> me, doesn't give me days off. And, but I've had to be like, hey, boss, chill. Like I need a day. Like don't, don't ask me to work on Sunday. So there's these moments where you make the decision to say, when am I replenishing my cup? Not necessarily how, I don't really care how, when, because it, you need the time. So this is where like time planning, productivity, um, measure, like measuring your productivity, uh, allowing yourself to make self-care be part of that productivity. So I it's like that. Because yeah. self-care enables you to show up and do what it is that you really desire to do. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it goes back to those non-negotiables. So if we look at life design, and I love to do this with my clients, right? It's called like the, the nine environments. And we say, what is our like, not like, like big goals in these nine environments and like the, your physical home, your, your physical body, your mind, um, spirituality, your relationships, your career, your finances, um, your, you know, time in nature, yourself. And when we design like what this is our ideal life, then we can map out the strategies to get there. So for example, spirituality, you're like, oh man, I really want to meditate, you know, an hour a day. Then it's my job as a coach to be like, well, let's figure out how to get there. Mm -hmm. What that looks like. Can we hire a cleaning person? Can you send your laundry to the, you know, folding wash place instead of you doing all the laundry? Mm -hmm. um, what is, what is the, the monetary value to that? What it's going to cost you 20 bucks to get your laundry done versus an hour. So, wow. all right, like either make 20 bucks or like don't buy three cups of Starbucks. There's your laundry. There's your time back. I love how you're reverse engineering all this. Like you say, okay, what do you Always. want? <laughs> Ask yourself what you want, because oftentimes women aren't even asking themselves, what do I really, really want? Like me. And then once you know that you say, okay, now that we know that let's reverse engineer it. And then all of a sudden with that strategy, you have power. Mm -hmm. You have the power of choice. You're either going to do the strategies or you're not going to do the strategies, but at least you know what they are and you have the choice to have that power or not. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes there's the, the, the fear or like the, the, the not sure how, I think that's how, where people like get tripped up the most. It's well, how do I do it? Like, okay. Yeah. You're telling me to find my vision and you're telling me to get an hour a day. How do I get there? This is where like, how are you using your time? So for example, like if I have 30 minutes of like, okay, not my meditation, there's just an extra 30 minutes in my day. Like, am I reading a book that's going to help me like become better at a skill set? Am I learning um, something that's going to help me empower my mindset? Am I listening to a podcast? And this is, this is what defines, I think also a lot of uh, successful people. And I don't want to call success, like just in business, like you could have, you could be successful at, in your life in general. It's like, how am I using my resources in a way that's going to help me achieve things with more, uh, more efficiently and more effectively. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I operate from that way. And that's how I help. I'd love to help my clients like think that way. It's like, what resources do I have? Even the other day, right. You were like, all right. And I was like, you have all the resources. 
like tap into them for a moment. Like just, I have all these tools. How do I use them? And realize that you have the resources you need. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I want to invite this moment and, and just let all of us here just allow yourselves to tap into the resources. And that resource could also be a friend, like call a friend, be like, Hey, you know what? Like, is there any way that you could just like come over my house and like, help me out for a little bit and not be afraid to like impose on people shame. Because, or shame. Right. Like mm-hmm. for me, because I'm, I am superwoman. And I am, I absolutely am. Like, I love to say that I am superwoman, but superwoman like needs a lasso. She has her shield. Like she's got tools, right? So allow yourself to be superwoman, but make sure you have the right freaking tools. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you can't, you can't, you can't be, you know, the heroine's journey is that you have support along the way so that you mm-hmm. can discover your gifts, utilize them and come back and be the one that shows other people how to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Never done. Nothing is done in isolation. Anyone that goes out there and says, Oh, I'm a self-made, whatever. I did this all on my own is full of (laughs) it. (laughs) I agree. And I bet you they made a thousand million mistakes and you know, it's, it's the picture of the iceberg. I kind of want to write so I wrote a book. I'm writing, uh, I'm co-authoring a book right now, but I want to write another book. And I don't know, maybe I'm saying this too early, but I kind of want to call it just the tip. <laughs> Terrible title. And get people's attention. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And it's going to have the picture of the iceberg, right? Mm-hmm. Like you only see just the tip, exactly. but like what's all the funk underneath, Yeah. you know? <laughs> And so, you know, I think we could, I mean, our week could go on and on. We're getting close yes. to the end of our show. So is there any, like, what is that one tip that you really feel that you could offer women um, to help manage that stress and to help claim their space and what they need? Create a plan. Create a plan. Like, honestly, like sit, sit, you know, even if, if it's by yourself for a minute, and work backwards, reverse engineer. This is what I want and not be afraid, right? Not be afraid to say like, okay, I want a million dollar business. Well, what does that look like? I need to raise my prices. I need to hire other people in my team. I need to outsource. Like, what does that look like? I need to find a cleaning lady. Like, right. What are these things that need to happen? Um, I talk a lot about this. It's called the law of tensegrity. I'll go through it very quickly. Assess where you are see where you want to go with a specific time frame. So you've got like maybe three to five years, pick one of the two, don't go too far. Okay. Three years right now I'm here. I have a, a house, I have a car, uh, I'm making $10,000. Three years. I would like to have two houses, one car and make $20,000. What are the goals, actions, and projects you need to do to get there? Yeah. So make sure that it's yeah. not too tight, right? If that If that, like, if you're pulling too tight saying like, I make 10,000, I want to make a million in three years, you might be pulling too tight and this is when you break. Yeah. So it's such great information. And I wish we could have more time to flesh that out, but we are at the end of the show. So Ari, I just want to thank you so much for all your wisdom and your passion and your presence. And I want everyone to know that you can find Ari online at www.bizyogi.co. That's B-I-Z-Y-O-G-I.co. And you can also find her on Instagram where she drops free tips daily at ari.biz.yogi. And I would highly suggest you reach out to her because she offers a free strategy session and it is so worth your while. So she can actually help you create the strategy that you need to have more freedom and space and ease in your life. And so, and I want to thank all of you amazing, strong and resilient women for joining us today on voice America's empowerment channel for women thriving unapologetically. And so let's be sure to join in every Thursday at 7 a.m. Pacific 10 a.m. Eastern on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. And just know that thriving means that you continue to move towards your goals in spite of life's challenges and that you can find the freedom you desire when you align with your heart and follow the guidance unapologetically. Until next week, my friends, much love.